How you doing? Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts. Today we're going to be going through an injector install for a 2.0 TSI engine and we're here with Charles from Humble Mechanic. Alright, for this particular DIY we're going to be replacing the intake manifold and also a fuel injector. Now to replace the fuel injector you have to take the intake manifold off so replacing the intake manifold or removing the intake manifold is the majority of the work. And for this we're going to need a T30, a number 5 Allen, 17 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter wrench or socket, I prefer a wrench. Um, I like to use a hose pick, hose clamp pliers, a deep 10 millimeter socket, a number 10 triple square, an oil filter wrench, a fantastic magnetic tray, a screwdriver, I also like to have a shop rag or gloves. Um, sitting around because you are going to be opening the fuel system up so we want something that we can uh, clean up any fuel that we spill. First disconnect the airflow meter and lay this connector to the side. Um, depending on where you want to take the back hose clamp off is up to you. You can take it off here. I actually like to take it off of this one like that. I'm going to take the front of the air box off there's three tabs that you just need to pull up. Take off the secondary air filter pipe. Some cars don't have this, so obviously if your car doesn't have that, you don't need to worry about it. There's one screw that needs to be undone between the air box and the vehicle battery. I'm going to release this out of the front. Give it a good pull. Take this piece off the, the air box induction pipe. Set that to the side. Now one thing you want to be careful is pull it, don't pull this straight up. You need to kind of massage it out. If you pull it straight up, you're going to break a coolant line. You'll see once I get it out how much more room we got to work. So there's the entire air box out. I'm going to lay that to the side. All right, like Paul said, we are going to go over how to remove and install an intake manifold on a 2 liter TSI turbo. Now, there's a couple of reasons you might want to remove your intake. One would be to replace it due to intake runner faults, another would be if you had to replace a fuel injector. And then finally, if you're doing any kind of decarb of the intake valves, you'll want to take the intake manifold off. This is a little bit bigger job, so you need more tools, a little bit more patience, and a little bit more skill. I would say if you've never done this job before, plan for about four hours from start to finish. All right, so we're going to actually start at the top and work our way down. Um, I like to start first by taking off this crank vent tube which there's a little trick. If you squeeze these together and rock it back and forth, it generally comes off pretty easily. Do this one first, rotate the pipe, and then do the same thing, and it comes right off. Next, we're gonna pull the fuel line out of the bracket on top of the intake. If you're replacing the intake manifold, you can go ahead and take the bracket off now. If you're just taking it off for a fuel injector, you can leave part of the bracket on. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and take these T30s out. Notice they're pointed. Make sure as you're doing this, you're staying pretty organized. Sometimes these things don't matter where they go, like these two are the same. Other ones will be different lengths. So you want to make sure everything goes back where it came from. Whenever I'm taking parts off, if there's a group of things that go together, like these screws and this nut right here, go along with this bracket, I like to keep all that stuff together. There is a wire loom that'll need to come off. So I like to set that there and keep it together. All right, a couple more things on the top end. One is gonna be this cam position sensor plug. We're gonna need to unplug that. 
and also disconnect this pipe here as well. All right, as we move kind of down the intake manifold, I'm going to go ahead and take the oil filter off. Now you won't lose really any oil when you take this off, but I still recommend taking it off nice and slow so that you don't sling any oil down on the serpentine belt. Also, if you don't put this back on before you start the car, it makes a big mess. So make sure that goes on before you start your car. Moving on, we got a few more T30s to take off. There's two over on this side. You'll see that attach coolant pipe brackets. So I'm going to take this one off. I also recommend putting all of your parts in a magnetic tray to keep them organized. You'll notice that these two, or this one here and the one I'm taking out now are a bit longer than the ones we took off the top. So you definitely need to make sure those go back in the right place. And there's two over here on this connector wire connector bracket. Now you can use power tools taking this stuff out, but I really recommend being careful putting it back in with power tools. It's easy to strip out the plastic intake manifold. And we can just let this bracket hang. It pretty much stays where it needs to be, but we'll just leave that there. Next, I'm going to undo the lines for the purge solenoid. We'll get this hose off. The purge solenoid actually stays on the intake manifold. All right, so I'm going to get my hose clamp pliers, take the rubber hose off the purge solenoid. Give that a twist or use a pick to get around the hose. Be careful doing it with these. You don't want to puncture the hose. That will cause a check engine light or can cause a check engine light, I should say. And this, I usually like to just take this and tuck it over there and get it out of the way. So now we have our T30s off, T30s off the top. The line to the purge solenoid is off. We can disconnect the connector from the purge solenoid, the intake temp sensor, and the throttle body. One quick tip on these connectors, instead of pushing the tab down and yanking back, if you push the tab and push the connector in a little bit further, usually the connectors come right off. And the, that one came off really easily, but connectors that have been on for a long time tend to get dirt and uh, gunk inside the housing and they can be a little bit more tricky to take off. All right. Next up is the intake pipe. Now, if you have the ability to lift the car off the ground and get underneath, it's going to make taking this intake pipe off a lot easier. Um, we're going to try and work around taking it all the way off and just moving it to the side. So you'll get to see uh, <laughs> exactly how that goes. Normally in the shop, I would put the car up in the air and take the entire thing off and get it all the way out of the way. But we're going to go go from here and see if we can't we can't do it like somebody that didn't have the ability to put the car up in the air. Undoing this clamp, this is actually a captive clamp so it stays with the pipe. Um, and then there's two T30s that hold the pipe, the hard plastic pipe, to the engine and also one electrical connector. So make sure you get your electrical connector disconnected before you start pulling on the pipe. All right, as we work on taking this intake pipe off, like I said, there's two screws that hold the pipe to the engine one connector, and then I, I gotta say one of the 
trickier parts of this job is actually getting this intake boot off the throttle valve. So I use a small pick tool like this, again, being very careful not to puncture the throttle body hose and just kind of work around it, separating the pipe from the throttle body. Now, depending on how many miles your car has on it, this can be a tricky part of the job because it's on the throttle valve pretty tight. You'll probably see me struggle with this for 40 to 50 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. That video would be incredibly boring. So I've went around as far as I could. Let's see if we can pull this pipe off and get it out of the way. There we go. All right, our pipe's still attached to at the bottom, but it's out of the way of what we need to do on the top. So we are just gonna keep on rocking and rolling. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and take one fuel line off, which is the one that's gonna be attached to the high pressure fuel pump Again, you're gonna get some fuel that comes out, so make sure you're being safe with what you do. We've already bled the fuel pressure off on this car, so we're not gonna, I'm not too worried about the fuel that's gonna come out. But I'm, not, I'm taking it nice and easy just to be on the safe side. Remember, when someone opens the driver's door of your car, it does prime the fuel pump, so that opening the door is gonna give you extra fuel pressure at the high pressure pump. And what I like to do is just give that a couple turns and then reach underneath the intake manifold and crack loose the hard line at the bottom. And I'll show you what I'm doing once we get the intake manifold off. This will make a lot more sense. Now notice I got a ton of room to wiggle this pipe. Now it makes taking the bottom fitting on the high pressure pump off a lot easier. So there we go, that's done. We got a few things that are gonna be underneath the intake manifold that are gonna be really hard to see in the video. But again, once we get the intake manifold off, I'll show you in depth that stuff so you can picture, just picture what I'm showing you and uh, you'll be able to see it later on in the video. All right, now one thing I wanted to mention that I did is I actually took a shop rag and put it in the intake pipe. And that way nothing will fall all the way down through my intake. But make sure you take this rag out because it can wreak havoc on drive, with drivability concerns. The other thing I did is I took a few things off the bottom of the intake manifold, things that you'd never see in the video under the intake manifold. So. What I really recommend is, at this point, watch the rest of the removal video so you can see what I'm talking about. Because if you start ripping things off, there's actually a connector for the ECT that's very easy to break. And I hate for you to have to repin a connector um, because we didn't take the time to take all the parts off the right way. So fast forward, watch that, and then come on back. Or do whatever you want. All right, so now that you've seen the stuff underneath, I'm gonna go ahead and take the main bolts of the intake manifold off. And there's actually 10 of them. And I like to just kind of break them all loose and then go back and, and run them out. Now this won't be the last thing that we have to do before we take the intake out. Now to expose one of these intake manifold bolts, you actually have to move this wiring harness out of the way that wraps around the top of the purge valve and in between the throttle body and the intake sensor. So this, is, this is the harness, just push it kind of down and out of the way and that'll give you access to the very last T30 bolt to take the intake manifold off.
Now I know it may seem like this is a ridiculously long extension to take these bolts out, but I feel like the less you have to bend over leaning into the hood, the more it saves your back. In addition to the T30s, there's also two 10 millimeter nuts that need to come off. One more connector that I didn't show you, one vacuum line, and some tabs that hold the connector for the fuel injectors. I like to pull the bolts out of the intake manifold so that they don't fall into the abyss that is the bottom end of this engine. And again, keep these kind of together. There's two T30 bolts at the bottom, which are a little trickier to get out. You want to lay bets on how long it's going to take me to get this bolt out of here? Hmm. All right, now we have the intake manifold completely unbolted. I'm going to show you the last couple of things that need to happen before the intake manifold actually comes off the car. First is going to be this vacuum line, which I recommend being very careful with. These plastic tabs are very easy to break. Nice and easy, we'll nurse that off. One more connector. And then a few tabs that are on the rail the wiring loom rail that hold the connectors for the injectors. And I like to just pop these with a screwdriver. Okay, now that should be everything we need to take off to actually remove the intake manifold from the car. I recommend before you start prying on the intake manifold to just double check and make sure you got all the screws out that need to come out, all the connectors disconnected, all the lines out of the way so that we don't damage anything pulling the intake manifold off. All right, I did a double check and made sure we have all the bolts taken out of the intake manifold. So now we're actually gonna remove the intake and this, it takes a little bit of effort, but I like to kind of rock the intake manifold back and forth. Nice and easy. And you'll feel it a point where it releases. And at this point is a good time to double check and make sure you, again, got all the connectors undone and everything out of the way. So I'm gonna just do one more double check.
trying really hard not to break that connector. <laughs> Paul would get his uh, wiring repair DIY sooner than he probably wanted. take up I like to turn it up like this and just do one final check and see how many injectors came out with it looks like we got two injectors that came out with the intake manifold that's actually really common for an injector to get hung inside the intake manifold so don't worry about that it's not a terribly big deal we actually got we lucked out and got three out with the intake manifold if that happens just make sure you disconnect the injectors and we'll worry about what we need to do putting them back in in just a minute. If you thought it smelled like gas before. And there we have one removed intake manifold. So I mentioned in the beginning of the video about doing a decarb, and we thought that while we had the intake manifold off, it'd be a good opportunity to show you guys exactly what we're talking about. So this is the intake runner of number four, and you can kind of see some of the shiny black stuff. If I pull this out, and get it out of the way, you're actually looking at the back of uh, cylinder four valves you can see all that black gook in there. All that's carbon buildup. Now there's a lot of theories about why that happens, but the truth is it doesn't really matter why that happens, it just happens. So this car has 30,000 miles thereabout, and it's already got a fair amount of buildup on it. So if you're taking your intake manifold off, make sure you take a look at that and see how much carbon you got built up. It's much easier to do it while you have the intake off than have to take the intake off a separate time. All right, so now that I got the intake manifold off, I wanna show you guys a couple of things that you really need to be aware of before you take the intake manifold off. You'll notice that I didn't take the throttle body off. Taking the throttle body off can make it a little bit easier to access this bracket, but you don't have to. Um, I've done so many of these that I just leave the throttle body on. This bracket is a really key thing you need to pay attention to. We're actually looking at the intake manifold upside down. Um, so this is the bottom of this bracket and this is the top. This is the top right here. This is a 13 millimeter nut, and this is a number 10 triple square. Um, what I like to do is loosen this bolt, then loosen this, and then take them out, because if you loosen one all the way, either one, it makes loosening the other one really tricky. But I don't always take the bracket out. I kind of leave it hanging off the intake manifold until I have the intake manifold up a little bit, and then I take the bracket out. But if you don't take this bracket out, you'll definitely rip one set of wires. There's two con one connector with two wires that go to a coolant temp sensor. And if you just pull the intake manifold straight out, it rips the wires right out of the connector housing. When I mentioned being really careful with that bracket at the bottom of the intake manifold, this is what I was talking about. This connector right here actually sits in front of the bracket. This bracket sits like this so if you just rip and pull the intake this way it'll actually pull the wires right out of this connector so that's that's probably in this whole job the thing you want to be the most careful of it's repairable but avoiding the situation is much better there's also one fuel pressure connector here um, the runner connector here and then this is that fuel line that i was talking about just cracking loose to give the hard metal line some movement now, if you're replacing the intake manifold, all this stuff's gonna come off and you're gonna swap it onto the new one. Okay, here I got a brand new intake manifold. So if we were replacing this intake manifold, we would be swapping fuel injector rail, 
this for the um, the purge valve, the throttle body. These pieces are actually part of the intake manifold, so this stays. There's also one sensor at the top that gets swapped, um, but you'll see it's right above the throttle body. You can see it's this connector right here gets swapped right into here. So the actual swap of parts from old intake to new intake is very easy. Um, this bracket you actually don't want to put on until you have the intake manifold reinstalled in the car. All right, one thing you need to be aware of when you replace your intake manifold or even just take the intake manifold off, a lot of times a couple of the fuel injectors will get stuck in the intake manifold. When that happens, you really want to take the time to replace the seals for the injectors. Um, it does require a special Volkswagen tool in order to replace this lower sleeve right here. Um, and you can see the way I have it laid out is the order that the parts go on the injector. This is the bottom. This piece is this little bracket right here. This goes underneath the rubber seal and then this slips over the top. So if you don't replace the injector seals, you do open yourself for the potential to cause a fuel leak. Okay, while we have the injectors out, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to show you clean in injector versus dirty injector and what can happen with the dirty fuel injector. If you'll notice the clean injector, which is pretty clear that it's this one, you can see some tiny, tiny, tiny little holes in the end of it. Now, if you look at the injector on the other side, the dirty one, you notice that those holes get slightly blocked with carbon buildup, and that can really affect the drivability of your two liter turbo. So one thing, if you're pulling this intake manifold off and replacing the seals, it may be a good idea to just clean the tips of those injectors as well. All right, now that we got everything swapped over, injector, new injector seals if needed, intake manifold parts swapped if needed, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the intake manifold. Now, like a lot of stuff, putting this back on is very similar to the way it came off. Um, there's a couple key things you wanna pay attention to. A lot of that is over tightening these bottom two intake bolts. I've seen more than one intake where it's been off a few times and these bolt holes are actually a bit stripped out. So that's something you wanna be, be very aware of. But putting it back together, like I said, is very, very, very much the same as it was taking it off. So we're gonna kinda set the intake manifold about where it goes and just kinda ease it on or try to. There we go. Now, even though I am, I do this for a living, <laughs> uh, a lot of times stuff like this you struggle with or fight a little bit, and it's no big deal. So... All right, so now we're basically lined up. We need to pull the wire bracket down a bit for the injector connectors get that out of the way so that we can fully seat the intake manifold. There we go. Did I mention this is my first day doing this? No. <laughs> All right, now we're a little bit better shape. So you actually, once you get the intake manifold kind of set on the injector seals, just giving it a little push should seat it just about all the way. So now it's seated. I'm gonna do like I, kind of the reverse of taking it off. I'm gonna put the bolts in their holes. I always like to start these bolts by hand. Since you're going into a soft aluminum head, you don't want to cross thread any of these bolts. I'm not sure I got this on all the way. There we go. Jobs like this, even though you can do quick, especially at home, no, there's no need to hustle through it because it's always faster to do it once than it is to do it two or three times.
I like how the easiest one is spoon. Always gives me the most trouble. Right? <laughs> All right, now that we have all the bolts started, we can go ahead and start snugging them up. Now, even though the, I don't think the repair manual says you need to do this, I like to kind of tighten them up a little at a time. You notice that as I snug that up, the intake manifold will actually raise up a little bit. And as I do the bottom ones, it'll probably come down a little bit. And that's why I like to do them Oh, a little bit at a time, sort of evenly. I don't recall in the in repair manual if it actually says a certain torque procedure, but I found that just doing them a little bit at a time works really, really well. All right, I'm gonna come back around one more time and just double check all my bolts, make sure they're all nice and tight without being too tight. Okay, we're all done. Go ahead and fire up your car. No, I'm just kidding. We still have more work to do. All right, I'm gonna hit these last two 10 millimeter nuts and then we're gonna just start kind of walking back through, putting all the rest of the accessory parts back on the car. The one I like to do first is this bracket that we talked about from the bottom, excuse me, underneath the intake manifold. Again, this is probably my least favorite part of the entire job, so I usually struggle with it uh, a little bit, and I like to take my time and be careful so that I don't have to do a wiring repair in addition to replacing the intake manifold. All right. So I got that bracket installed on the bottom of the intake. Again, that was that's probably the most challenging part of the job. Having the throttle body off does make it a little bit easier, but again, not necessary. So I'm just gonna kind of work through and plug back in all the connectors, install all the brackets. I'm gonna put the oil filter on first, because that one will make probably the biggest mess if we forget. and just work through and put everything back just the way you found it. Now remember we had both ends of this fuel line loose. What I like to do is start the side at the high pressure pump Try and start the side at the high pressure pump. There we go. And get that snug and then snug both ends up with the wrench. And you want to do that fairly early on because if you reinstall this connector bracket, it actually blocks the fuel line. And you notice I'm holding this here with my left hand. There's a T30 that goes in here that holds this bracket. So by holding it, I'm just kind of positioning it in the right spot. And we snug up the line side. And we're good to go there. Remember we put this rag inside the intake pipe. We want to go ahead and take that out because we're gonna put the intake, the intake pipe back on. And I like to go ahead at this point and just tighten this right away so that I don't forget. That's one thing I try and do whenever I'm taking something off, or taking a part off a car, I like to keep everything together. And then when I'm installing a part, if it's something like this where there's a clamp on it and that's the only thing it affects, I like to go ahead and tighten it up, it eliminates well, lessens the likelihood that you might forget something. And I've actually seen one or two cars come back with this hose loose after someone did an intake manifold. We can also go ahead and reinstall 
the purge valve pipe. Again, just go ahead and put the clamp on it right away. Line these up in the brackets. And while I'm doing this, I'll actually just let you guys know, Paul asked me to come down and shoot some video with him, which is super cool of, uh, of him to invite me down. I've been working for Volkswagen for about 11 years fixing cars. And um, I started out as a just a young kid, went to UTI, Universal Technical Institute, and uh, went through the Volkswagen Academy and started at the dealership in 2004. And uh, here we are, 2014, so a little over 10 years later, um, still rocking and rolling. I'm a master certified Volkswagen technician, um, e-mobility, hybrid, pretty much everything at this point minus e-golf, which um, I actually don't know if anybody's e-golf certified yet, but uh, my state won't see that, that car anytime soon. So that's a level of certification I probably will never have. Back when I started, the uh, the Torag was the big, the big scary beast that no one wanted to work on. And uh, being the new guy, I kind of got stuck with all of them. And uh, it was cool for me because I really got to cut my teeth on probably one of the harder cars that VWs had, at least in the the time that I've worked on them. So I got really good at fixing Torags and. Uh, Never really had a problem working on them. Other than doing oil changes and rotating tires, I was never a fan of that. Those are some big, heavy tires. So, got these brackets installed. I got these T30s installed over here. I'm going to put this vacuum line back on. I'm going to also go ahead and put the vacuum line routing thing back on. I'm going to plug this back in. Now you'll notice that everything's kind of laying where it came from, which makes putting a lot of this stuff back on really easy. Grab this bracket here. And go ahead and put our wire back on the bracket. Remember I put these two T30s up here with this 10 millimeter nut in the bracket. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this bracket back down. Now, if you did replace the intake manifold, these T30 screws at the top are gonna be a little bit more challenging to install because you're actually gonna be cutting new threads. We didn't replace the intake on Paul's car, we just, just took it off for demonstration purposes, so these go back on fairly easy. This is another bolt that you don't need to Hercules when you tighten down. Remember, you're just going into plastic, so it just needs to be tight enough to hold this bracket down. I can go ahead and put my fuel line back in. I'm going to snug down this 10 millimeter nut. I'm going to install my crank vent tube. Now we actually have a couple more things we need to do, but at this point, since I got almost everything connected, I like to stop and just look and make sure that I don't really have any leftover parts. There are two more screws we have to tighten, but they're captive on the intake manifold, uh, the intake pipe. So I'm just gonna kinda touch everywhere that I've had my hand, make sure all my connectors are plugged in all the way, make sure nothing's loose, make sure that clamp is tight. There is one connector that we had to disconnect underneath the intake manifold. Make sure that's plugged in. Make sure your both sides of your hard fuel line are tight. connector down there that's not plugged in yep 
we got this connector we still need to plug in and one down at the bottom for the uh, for the intake. Okay, so we look good here. I'm going to move down to the side where you're probably just going to... I'm going to try and not just show you the top of my head. So we got the one for the intake manifold. This one can actually be kind of tricky to plug in because of the way the uh, loom for the injectors sit. That one's plugged in. The boost pressure sensor down at the bottom. It's plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these T30s. We're going to put the air box on, do one final check, and uh, fire it up and see how she runs. All right, our last step is to go ahead and put the air box back on. Now, I don't generally separate them when I'm taking the whole thing out. You can, it does make it a tiny bit easier, but if you just pull up a little bit on this coolant pipe, you can, you can actually reinstall it fairly easily. Just like that, give it a push. There is one screw that has to be screwed in, and that's a number five Allen. That's snug. Go ahead and plug our mass airflow meter in. Put our wire back. Let's put our clamp on. Just like that. The last pieces of our ducting. Our secondary air filter pipe. The cover. And I like to do at this point, since we are almost done minus putting the engine cover back on, I just like to do one more quick check. Make sure all our connectors are plugged in, just like we did before. We have no extra parts. And we install the engine cover. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was the full DIY of remove and install an intake manifold on a 2-liter TSI Volkswagen engine.